Good afternoon all. The British Championship started yesterday and I believe upset of the round was Susan Lalich against Simon Williams. So Simon Williams, very strong British Grandmaster 2528. Susan's a WGM. Um, she's uh, approaching about 2300 at the moment and I was I was lucky to draw over actually a couple of years ago I think was it two or three again in the British Championship and uh, she had a great attack but I somehow survived um, Simon Williams I have played him in the past and lost he's, he's a brilliant player and um, here you know it's very interesting this game I thought because it had the Alakine Chattard attack system which uh, statistically uh, this system's got great stats at ChessGamesCom, and I, I had good results of it myself. So it's an early kind of gambit system um, against the French defence, so an early positional sacrifice we're going to see. So knight f6, bishop g5, bog standard so far. Now bishop e7. And, you know, I, I, I stopped playing this. I've, I've not, not done well against this, and I think I was smashed by Eames in the Barnet Congress. Uh, uh, two or three years ago with this as well. He played just h4, the Alakine chat on attack. So it's offering a pawn uh, for a dynamic initiative. And, you know, like one of the ideas, if, if, if black has does take, is you get this tempo with knight h3, and then you can come to f4. Then h7 is a bit vulnerable, and then bishop d3. I've got a couple of games where <clears throat> um, I video annotated in this playing white. I really like this system uh, against the French. So the Alakine Chantard system scores well statistically. Simon Williams played c5. And <clears throat> now actually, um, something like knight b5 I think is, is a mistake actually because then there's, I think there's an immediate f6 and this is a bit unclear, a bit messy. But uh, So bishop takes e7 is much more clear cut here. And you'll notice, you know, black has omitted that a6 move. So as though tempting this continuation which I'm not sure um, is, is that good although for all I know this might be theory actually uh, allowing uh, knight b5 to d6 that's that's like a major threat so should well one question statistically uh, was black meant to play a6 okay that, that's the big question here so Simon Williams he's allowing you know this bishop e7 he's, he's, his idea is clearly um, you know to capture uh, with the king here which seems a bit controversial. In fact, you know, black could probably uh, survive uh, knight b5 here with, with knight, a move like knight a6, maybe just allow knight d6. If we just quickly engine check this out of curiosity, you know, because there's a question here about why, why he couldn't have played um, queen e7. Okay. Okay, white's advantage um, is, is significant here. After knight b5, is there anything strong in knight b5? No, that's that's the right move. Uh, so either king d8, believe it or not, uh, not probably not knight a6. Knight d6 is a bit like, but king d8 is is given by Houdini. It's a small advantage to white, but you know this, this is this is probably quite playable because of this f6. I mean, it might it might be. It looks a bit grovelly. Okay, it looks a bit grovelly. But the game continuation. Uh, let's see uh, from a theoretical standpoint. Um, Queen e7 um, and King e7 are much the same actually on Houdini. So King e7 was played anyway. Okay, so the king's stranded in the centre. All right, let's turn the engine off. So that's the first interesting part of this game. Can Susan, uh, without her centre collapsing, try and you know expose the black king? Is the black king really an exploitable weakness here with the white centre under such severe pressure? Well, Knight f3 was played. Now Knight c6. And then we have an interesting move, just getting on with things, queen d2, to try and castle queen side, not worrying about a potential loss of, of the e5 pawn here. Um, so I wonder what's going on here, actually. Knight takes, now say knight takes here. It looks it looks very dangerous, actually. Queen um, g5 check, well, may, maybe king f8 there. But it looks as though, well, this is a standard sort of gambit, I think, maybe castles queen side, then just f4 and f5, just trying to tear apart the black king. P possibly that's the idea. Unless there's an outright uh, win here, I'll just check, just in case there was an outright win, which I'm missing. No, apparently um, black's okay, uh, on brief analysis anyway. 
So that would have been an idea maybe, this uh, c takes d4. Uh, so possibly knight b5 was needed. Um, and in which case knight takes e5 now, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes d4. Again black, black might be okay here. Okay, so we're back to back to the game again. So C D, knight takes D four. Now Simon Williams attacks that centre again. Queen B six. And now there's a really interesting idea. If White's going to castle queenside, would you really want this B file with your king here? Would you really want this B file pressure on B two? Because that's exactly what White invited now with her next move. She just took on c6. Amazing. And then castles right into it, into this seemingly aggressive b file. Castles. So White's banking on, you know, b3 being okay, but also this rook can shift to the third rank to help defend things. Uh, so it's not as bad, you know, as it would seem. Um, constantly, of course, knight e5 does, does mean, you know, e file and queen g5s might be dangerous. So black actually actually rules out queen g5 with h6. And now the pawn's actually protected, f4. So Simon Williams, um, in this position, you know, maybe he's thinking his king's not that bad. He can use the b file, it seems logical. Rook b8. So we see the move b3. And now pressure's starting to build now, knight c5 it would seem, on the queen side. Black really needs to get, you know, the rooks maybe in the game at some point maybe but rook h3 is sort of attacking and defending you know th these points um, are being reinforced so rook d8 which in a way actually seeks to possibly undermine you know b3 if b3 can be made vulnerable through undermining c2 that seems to be the idea so that pawn's actually blocked from moving queen d4 there's no nasty check at the moment because the rook's protecting the queen. So queen a5 was played. Now interesting move h5, which actually gives the h4 square. So in some variations, this h4 square um, is going to be a useful way of getting to the king. Something to bear in mind, as well as suppressing, you know, black's kingside pawns. So rook b4. As though maybe you know the rooks can be double or knight a4 might be dangerous in the future or c5 maybe later try and get in c4 you know but uh queen f2 and that h4 square is is the entry point to get to the king to get a look in okay d4 so the undermining of b3 you know this is this has some implications here if d3 is going to happen but check is used and now you know another pawn sack and this this is starting to get really uh, a little bit scary uh, losing the a2 pawn against a 2500 gm so knight b1 um so while d3 actually doesn't seem that practical at the moment because bishop takes d3 and the rooks on it uh you know the a2 pawn what's going on here looks as though um you know may maybe uh why it was worse here theoretically let's let's check this out i you know it doesn't look as though the black king here is is that exploitable i mean look at this king the you know these rooks you know here and here it don't seem that relevant or the bishop um black actually was better here apparently according to houdini significantly after queen takes a2 but now we see the start of um you know a sneaky attack uh rook g3 okay engine off there so rook g3 and we start to see some problems now you know black can't defend the pawn because of queen takes d8 that easily um so actually um rook d5 is played offering you know g7 as a sort of positional set because you know knight takes b3 and rook c5 would be menacing if the rook wasn't protecting these points okay but now we uh, have um a strengthening of the position so in particular, in the art of war, you know, it says strengthen your position before going on the attack. B3 is the vulnerable point here, it would seem. The variations uh, which Simon Williams is hoping for, you know, rook g7, knight takes b3, looks as though that's a forced mate. So instead, b3 is reinforced. 
And at the same time now, after d3, which is aiming to undermine b3, knock out this pawn to get to b3, now an exchange sack is used. This rook really is not doing much in this game up until now, because it's making way for these forces to be able to combine for an attack against the black king potentially later. So rook d takes uh, d3, offering exchange, which is taken. Okay. So we have here black, the exchange up. Is it a bad exchange up? Well, the knight was uh, a real menace and it's gone now. Distant dream of a knight. The rook is still threatening uh, rook, you know, takes g7. Um, if, if the king did move, then this rook's kind of virtually pinned to d8. Um, and also, uh, of course, there's queen g4 to factor in. How would black defend that anyway? Uh, if king king f8 queen g4. So actually, these these guys now seem quite useful in this position. So here is something totally uh, a, a radical solution uh, from black. Uh, maybe Simon Williams is given a position which excites him very much with this, you know, b3 and this queen, you know, right next to the king. Maybe a little bit of over optimism crept in. Let's just check this move, this next move, technically. In fact, it seems difficult, this position. Apparently, it is actually difficult technically, with black's best move being given as rook e5 by, by Houdini. There's that pin on the queen. Then rook g7, there's uh, the very technical move here uh, to avoid getting slaughtered. Rook g5. Maybe uh, this is difficult for any human to see this continuation. Um, and it's only about equal, apparently. Rook takes, h takes. So White's found some compensation uh, with this exchange. It's going to be about equal, actually, because of the perpetual checks now, uh, I guess. It's, it's too difficult to defend the king. So anyway, let's let's go back. So a radical solution here. Rook takes b3, a rook sack. It's taken, and you know, is it that clear? Um, you know, check. Say there's king d1. You know, the rook, the bishop is protecting key squares. So actually, queen f2 is played. Okay, ties down the rook. Threatens also immediately. Rook takes d3 with that pin. Still the threat of rook c5, but uh, the calm queen g4 keeps things protected. So breaking that um, virtual pin, and isn't white material up? The thing is, white also go gets a cosy sort of king position now. After a5, uh, there's potential for playing bishop c2 soon, and that's used soon. But first, queen takes g7 to try and expose the black king, and offering the f4 pawn. So the king walks a bit into comfort now. King b2. With the queen protecting e5, that's another point to protect e5 in this line. So rook takes e5. So material up for white. A knight for two pawns. Okay, black has five pawns, white has three. White's a piece up for two pawns. Check. Now rook f3. And is f7 dropping? No, because it's check. Knight c3. f5. But uh, you know the coordination of white's pieces is quite good now. Rook g3, you know this, this seventh rank after f5. This king's a bit exposed. King c7. Now bishop c2, and it seems quite watertight again. This mass here and this rook protecting c3. So the tables have turned. It seems check. Queen a8. There's menacing threats now against the king. Like check and or rook g8 and queen b8. So queen d4 looks like a powerful central move, but uh, you know rook g8 clear threats like uh, queen b8 mating, so that has to be parried. So rook b5, but now check. There's a flurry of checks here, but now queen g7 knocking out that central position of the queen, or asking black to do something about that. So he blocks with a rook, but now queen f6. And that renews quite a dangerous looking check, actually. Queen d8 check. 
Um, also, this is a very annoying pin anyway. And um, maybe also Rook D8 or Rook G7, the potential threats. So Rook D5 was played here. Now, okay, may maybe some of us, you know, a piece up might consider the exchange of queens. But actually, Susan gets bigger advantage, I think. Check, check. And she snatches actually Queen H6. And in this position, Simon Williams resigns. So is it that bad? Let's let's just check this final position. What what's going on here? Let's let's check a few moves here in this final position. Okay, so let's let's check Rook C5. Check that be a disaster because the Queen's getting lost. So not not Rook C5. So say A4. Check. Check. Now in this position. I'm just wondering what's easier. The check is apparently not technically best, just marching this pawn. So isn't the white king in trouble? Say check. The quick, although the queen's on it, and you might think queen takes a3, but then there might be rook c5, you see. Actually, this might be stronger, because if takes, then there's queen g7 again. Or is it? Uh, yeah, queen g7, just winning the queen. So that, that wouldn't be... Um, on this, on this, okay. So rook a a five was was the threat there, but um, here rook, rook a five is is not not harmful. Okay, so it seems this this uh, clearance of the eight, you know, the h pawn block, the h six pawn is this pawn is quite dangerous now in this position. If we go back here, uh, so what does black do? Um, right, say queen h four. Could take that, that rook. Well, the exchange up here, it's it's fairly unpleasant. Now h6 again. And if d4, not not just the exchange up. Sorry, a rook up. So that's why this h pawn is pretty deadly in the final position. Um, if you think there's a defence, you know, please leave uh, comments on YouTube. But I'm checking this with Houdini. Apparently, this is plus 12 this position. Uh, let, let's just move the king back for a sec. So check and then h6 again. And then so, so you did every time you move the rook, sorry, every time you try and move the rook, for example, there's queen g7. So black king is the black king's really hounded in this position. Can't really uh, increase the attacking pressure. Um, but let's give it a shot with a4 just one last time in this in this line. So we, we're talking this line, check, h6, say a4 here, h7. It's just not in time, this, this pawn's now queening with check. Okay, so that was a, that was an amazingly interesting game. Let's have a look at it again. So, well done Susan, um, the Anakine Chattard system. Um, so c5 immediately, not bothering with a6. And his bishop takes e7, and um, king takes e7, and we have here a very interesting position where e5 is also offered in the gambit spirit. Um, because you'll note also, you know, knight takes e5, queen g5. The, the knight here is protecting d8, so king f8 would be possible, probably as well as f6. No, not f6, queen g7. So, um, okay, but uh, yeah, I mean, this this was the interesting moment, you know, maybe, uh, let's just check again, knight takes e5 isn't totally uh, crazy. That probably is the best move technically, knight d takes e5. But even so, you know, it gives white the spirit of the position, you know, the gambit, the pressure. So the queen b6, um, you know, maybe, maybe Simon wins, he wasn't expecting this knight c6. If knight b3, that looks a bit passive. Um, and, you know, say, say knight b3 had been played. Again, you know, it looks as though knight d takes e5 is possible. 
Um, what, what is going on here? It's alternate variation. Knight D takes E5. And if Queen G5, it's King F8. Hmm. <laughs> so, okay, let's look at another one though. If castle's here, then, okay, maybe the idea is knight takes. And here, you know, definitely knight takes e5 is, is safe. So in this position, actually, um, actually, the engine move suggestion is knight a4 here. And um, queen takes d4. Which is not so bad as the queen's coming off. Okay, so very interesting uh, variations for those that might be interested in this Anakine chat art system. So knight takes c6 has some real logic to it. If the white king is not so bad on the queen side here, as was evidenced in this game, it seems. So even giving up the a2 pawn, remarkably. Uh, but no, no, technically black seems to be better, but you know, Susan really made inroads with, with two major pieces here to get to the king. It has to be said. So this h5 is a very, very important move. Knowing that you know the blockade on the d pawn is about to be lifted with this threat, you know, on the queen. So that means d5, d3, d5, d4, d3, and in the process, the knight's going to be dislodged away from a2. So it's really uh, cut razor sharp defensive ideas combined with attacking ideas. So defensive ideas, just giving up, you know, the A2 pawn. And now, you know, exchange sack. Maybe, maybe it smacks a bit of necessity, this exchange sack. Otherwise, White's King's getting torn to shreds. There isn't, there isn't too much um, else to do in this position. Um, so, yeah, good exchange sack. And it's it's all of a sudden, you know, it's not so clear. You know, the Black King really is, is a liability. Uh, Okay, so this rook sack was, was interesting, um, but um, you know it was was taken, and White is able to uh, get a, a, a position where the king doesn't seem too bad. The Black King is is more exposed, and the centre is now challenged with Queen G seven. Sorry, Queen G seven. So that rook e5 blocks that. Queen f6. And now sneakily taking this h6 pawn, which means this pawn's you know a total menace now. And here, you know, Simon resigned. So the very interesting game there. Uh comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.